Hello, I'm Atu Jimmer and you're watching Hornbill TV's Prime at 9, now news and details. Amid strong hints that the government may change in Bihar, Chief Minister Nitish Kumar had a telephonic conversation with Congress Interim President Sonia Gandhi. Meanwhile, the left has also announced its support for the JDU if Nitish's government faces any trouble after news broke of these agreements between NDA partners JDU and the Saffron Camp. Well, the CPIMLL, which is the largest left party in Bihar, with 12 MLAs, said that it will extend a helping hand if JDU were to ditch the PJP and set up or join a new coalition. The CPIM, the larger party nationally, but with two legislators in the state, felt that if a new alignment were to take place, it would be a positive development. According to sources, the PJP is waiting for JDU's move and has asked its leaders, workers and lawmakers not to comment on the current political situation in the state. Amid this, both parties will be holding meetings tomorrow to discuss a way forward as the alliances reaches in danger mode. The cabinet expansion in Maharashtra will happen tomorrow. Sources have said Deputy Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis is likely to get the home portfolio. The new cabinet comes 40 days after the PJP and Shiv Sena formed a new government under Chief Minister Ignat Shinde. The expansion of the Maharashtra cabinet will take place before you can even imagine. Deputy Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis had told reporters in Delhi in response to questions on the induction of new ministers. So far, the Maharashtra cabinet has been functioning with two members since June 30. Both Fadnavis and Chief Minister Ignat Shinde were in Delhi over the weekend as Mr. Shinde along with 22 other chief ministers attended a Niti Aayog meeting. Fadnavis announced that Finance Minister Nimala Sitaraman has been given the responsibility to coordinate efforts to better the PJP's performance in Paramati, the Pawar family's stronghold in western Maharashtra from where Sharad Pawar's daughter Supiya Sule is the MP. A report on a monitoring survey of cancer risk factors and the health system's response in the Northeast region for Nagaland was released today by Nagaland Minister for Health S. Pangya Pom at the Nagaland Civil Secretariat in Kohima. Speaking at the program, the minister said the study is the first of its kind in Nagaland and that it will greatly enhance understanding in the fight against the burden of cancer. He said it is a call for real purposeful and transformative action that will improve the care and lives of patients and the families that have been traumatized by the burden of cancer. I should see is the first of its kind in Nagaland, which I believe will greatly enhance the understanding and our eliminations in the fight against the burden of cancer, which has long led the population of Nagaland. It is a call for real, purposely, and transformative action that will improve the health and lives of patients in their families that have been traumatized by the burden of cancer, especially in our state for so many decades. A brief report on the finding of the study was Highlighted by Dr. Vinod Solia Kamo, Principal Investigator Consultant and State Nodal Officer, BSL Labs Research and Ethics Department of Health and Family Welfare. Highlighting the survey, she said that the Northeast is a hotspot for cancer in the country where Nagaland ranks 11th in cancer incidence in India and ranks second highest in the world for nasopharynx cases. The population-based cancer registry has provided much needed cancer data. It is vital to understand the likely reason for the report, reported cancer incidence and its outcomes to track, evaluate and implement suitable interventions. Why this survey? Not easy 
is the hot spot of cancer in the country. Nagaland ranks 11 in cancer incidence in India and ranks second highest in the world. A short speech was delivered by cancer survivor Nido Nyuangami Batmashri Awardee. She urged the state government to develop the required infrastructure in the state at the earliest as due to poor infrastructure, it is very difficult for poor people in the state to get treatment. The Botanical Survey of India, Kolkata in collaboration with Rhododendron Park organized a seminar about the plantation of the flower Rhododendron and about sustainable tourism today at the Rhododendron Park at Jakama village in Kohima. Speaking at the seminar, Dr. Ashiho A. Mao, Director of the Botanical Survey of India, encouraged the people to work for eco-friendly tourism, which is to uphold the aspect of conservation of natural biodiversity. To preserve the rhododendron, the state flower of Nagaland, he called for the preservation and conservation of plants. Mao said Nagaland has 11 different rhododendron species, plants, and there is a need to preserve the species from extinction. From that, but normally, I say, <coughs> don't take this for pollen. Uh, because here, one chemical called gray toxin, and that is a, if you take that in, you get nervous disorder or you get uh, breathlessness, and then sometimes you will get this uh, stomach problem, or <coughs> all those things come. So, that is why you should not take that. Otherwise, uh, rhododendrons are okay, but uh, some are very poisonous. In Aruna channel, so some yellow ones. So that's why even animals don't eat, that is what they should say. Because the, the actually, m m most of the time, animals know better than us, which are poison or not poison. So we also, in our saying, also, I think we people must be like, if cow can eat, maybe we also can eat, human beings also can eat, nothing happen. That is what. The, I mean, the, or the old people used to say, no, that is right. Also addressing the event, Kevin Tutio Sopier, Senior Superintendent of Police, spoke on the topic of sustainable tourism, preservation and protection to conserve natural environments, which is important for every individual as random destruction of the environment may cause climatic change. We humans has become very selfish. As humanity or as society advance, instead of being an educated person and trying to conserve or preserve nature and environment, we are becoming more destructive. Everybody is becoming very selfish. Every nation is trying to build nuclear weapons to threaten each other, to intimidate each other and show their might. So in the process, we are destroying or making a mass destruction of the beautiful nature which has been given to both by us. Lieutenant General P. C. Nair, Director General of the SM Rifles, inaugurated a captain late in Kengurusi MVC Center of Excellence and Wellness at Cheswema in Kohima on August 8. The project was conceived by the SM Rifle to empower the youth of Nagaland through education and secure a better future for them. In his address, the official appreciated the efforts of IGAR North. Niedo and Axis Bank for coming together for the cause, which will not only fulfill the drive of immensely talented youths of Nagaland, but will also assure prosperity and happiness in the society and the state, the update stated. Very generous. To me, particularly, having done uh, two earlier tenures in Nagaland, one in the very recent past as IG. Uh, I always want to reach out to children from the very far from the areas of Nagaland. And uh, today, when I was told that I was going to be children who is here, 14 of them uh, belong to Mon and uh, I will take this 
that's uh, truly what we want to do. We want to reach out to children who are there. Uh, and uh, it's not that we have anything against children from Bohemia to Mampu. Uh, but you have uh, greater access to various educational facilities and other training regimen. But it is these children who need to have help, and that is where they are set. Uh, a lot has been said, and the movie also showed on the Snake Captain, which is our movie. Major General Vikas Lakeda, Inspector General SM Rifles North at Kohima addressed the students about the drive and highlighted that this project will provide a genuine opportunity for quality education to children through specialized mentors. The project has been conceptualized as a year-long residential coaching and men mentoring facility for students from economically weaker and underprivileged sections of Nagaland for prestigious competitive examinations like MEET and JEE. The MOU between SM Rifles, Axis Bank and NIEDO was signed on May 13, 2022, which commenced the arduous journey of selecting 30 meritorious students from the entire state of Nagaland. The student underwent various stages of testing to be finally selected among the top 30. As part of the Harkar Tiranga campaign under the ages of Azadi Karmit Motsav to mark the 75 years of India's independence, Newland District, along with the rest of the country, organized morning walk today to encourage citizens to hoist the tricolor flag in their houses from August 13 to 15 as a symbol of pride for every Indian. The campaign is to keep the spirit of patriotism alive and to promote awareness about the national flag, to unite Indian citizens to work collectively to create better tomorrow. The district will carry out the campaign till August 13. The all tribal students union Manipur leaders who were arrested on the charges of comprising to impose economic blockage in the hill district of Manipur have been released today from Sajiwa Central Jail at around 6.30 p.m. The argument was brought after a marathon talk between a ministerial team of the state government led by TA Minister Let Pao Haukip and members of the ATSUM late yesterday. All five arrested leaders refused to comment, saying they will speak after meeting with other leaders. Earlier during the day, TA Minister Led Pao Haukip said that the government has reached an agreement with the ATSUM leaders and following which the ATSUM will lift the economic blockade and all the five members of the ATSUM in judicial custody is released. Meanwhile, long queue can be seen in front of gas stations as economic blockage continues. Till the time of filing the report, blockage has been continuing and internet suspension is also still in place. China announced the new drills on Monday, a day after what was supposed to be the concluding day for four-day joint live fire exercises around Taiwan, but did not specify how long the new round of drills would continue. The announcement also comes after Beijing on Sunday announced additional military exercises around the Yellow Sea located between China and the Korean Peninsula. And the Bohai Sea off the northern Chinese coast expanding drills across new maritime areas. China held joint combat training exercises around self-governed Taiwan, focusing on anti-submarine and sea assault operations as Beijing continued to put pressure on the island in response to a visit by the U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi last week. The Eastern Theater Command of the People's Liberation Army said in a statement on China's Twitter like Weibo that it will practice conducting anti-submarine attacks and sea raids around the island, which Beijing claims as a breakaway province. The drill on the Bohai Sea will be held between August 8 and September 8, while another on the Yellow Sea will be conducted between August 7 and 15, China's Maritime Safety Administration said in a statement. Laksha Sen clinched the gold medal for India in the Commonwealth Games 2022 in Birmingham on Monday. 
He trashed his Malaysian opponent Tia Young and Dubai 19 by 21, 21 by 9, 21 by 16 to win his maiden gold medal at the multi nation event. Sen lost the first round by a close margin of 21 by 19. However, he leveled the game after winning the second set by 21 by 9 as he took 10 points on the trot. The 20 year old Sen had defeated Singaporean shuttler Jia Hen Jason Dite. In the semi-finals by 21 by 10, 18 by 21, 21 by 16. On the other hand, Tia Yong beat Kidambi Srikant 13 by 21, 21 by 19, 21 by 10 in the other semi-finals. After Sen's victory, India's medal tally has now risen to 57 including 20 gold medals. India's PV Sindhu took another giant step towards permanently etching her name in the badminton history books by winning her maiden Commonwealth Games individual gold and completing a hat trick of medals at the Games with a win over Michelle Lee of Canada in the women's singles finals in Birmingham. Sindhu has now bettered the metal color in all her three CWG attempts. The ace Indian shuttler had won bronze in. Women's singles in 2014, Glasgow Games, followed by a silver in gold course four years ago. On Monday, the two-time Olympic medalist beat the 2014 Commonwealth Games champion in straight games, 21 by 15, 21 by 13, to clinch India's 19th top of the podium finish at CWG 2022. Sindhu started the first game aggressively. The former world champion, who was a bit unusually animated right from the beginning of the gold medal match, helped herself to a 4 by 2 lead. The Canadian, however, made a quick comeback with back-to-back -back points. That Sindhu wasn't at all interested in letting Michelle engage her in long rallies was evident when she played a down-the-line smash at the Canadian serve at 6 by 6. Authorities on Monday demolished the encroachment at a Noida housing society by Srikant Tyagi, the self-proclaimed PJP worker, is in the news for allegedly abusing and assaulting a woman last week. <laughs> Bulldozers accompanied by teams of Noida police rolled in at the Grand Umax in Noida Sector 93 where Shrikan Tiagi had manhandled and hurled expletives at a woman resident after she reportedly confronted him about encroachment by him. The video of the incident went viral. Residents of the Noida Housing Society were seen cheering and clapping as a bulldozer brought down the illegal construction by Tiagi. We are happy with this action by Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath and CEO of Noida Authority. We were annoyed with his illegal construction and attitude, a resident said. Uttar Pradesh Deputy CM Prajesh Pratak said CM has taken cognizance of the whole case. We will not let the accused walk free. Strict actions will be taken against those who break the law. Shrikant Tyagi, who is absconding, was booked under Indian Penal Code Section 354, assault or use of criminal force on any woman, intending to outrage or knowing it to be likely that he will thereby outrage her modesty. On Friday, over a spat with a co-resident of their housing society in Noida Sector 93B. Noida police later slapped a gangster action on Shrikant Tyagi, under which his properties can be attached and demolished. 
Additional Deputy Commissioner of Police, Law and Order, Ravi J. Singh told the PTI that police teams are continuously raiding possible whereabouts of Tiagi and making all efforts to ensure his arrest at the earliest. In 2019, the Grand Omax Association of Apartment Owners wrote a letter to the Noida Authority for the removal of encroachment by Shrikan Tiagi. The Noida Authority had sent a notice to Shrikant Tiagi in February 2020. The PJP has distanced itself from the controversy, saying that Tiagi was not a member of the party. Special Court on Monday remanded Moshin Ahmad, the Alajayas man, who was held by the National Investigation Agency on Saturday from Butler House to NIA's custody till August 16. On Sunday, a march was produced before the duty magistrate at Patiala House Court, which remanded him to only one day NIA custody. A march was again produced before the court on Monday by the NIA, which sought his six day remand. The case, the probe agency said, has links with several states and the need to take him to another stage for the recovery of evidence and arresting his aid. After hearing the arguments, the court remanded Ahmad to NIA's custody. Ahmad is a radicalized and active member of Islamic State. He has been arrested for his involvement in collection of funds for IS from sympathizers in India as well as abroad. He was sending these funds to Syria and other places in form of cryptocurrency in order to further the activities of IS, the NIA official said. On Saturday, the NIA conducted searches in the residential premises of the accused in Butler House and in Bihar and subsequently had arrested him in the case pertaining to online and on-ground activities of IS. The case was registered sua moto by NIA on June 25. Further investigations in the matter is on. That's all we have for now. Keep watching Hornbill TV.